Welcome to this little tutorial. I'm going to show you how to use Tina CMS. That is a new tool that you can use for live editing your content in, for example, a Gatsby site. But you can use it with the Create React app. They also support Next, and they're probably going to support a lot more stuff in the future because this is relatively new. So it's just starting to gain traction in the community. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install Tina and how to get this nice sidebar here on your Gatsby site to edit your content. So let's get to it. There's a few steps you have to do. As always, you have the docs here where you can read everything. There's not a lot of documentation right now. It will probably be a lot more docs in the near future as this gain more and more attention in the community. All right, they have this little introduction here and they also show you some concepts, the fields, the Tina plus Gatsby and Tina plus Next.js and how you can contribute to this. And I'm going to show you how to install Tina and also how to use it with Gatsby. So let's get to it. I have my site here, that's a Gatsby site for my online courses. So I'm going to use this one to show you how to implement this. So I'm going to show you how to install this. So if we look here at Tina plus Gatsby, and the manual setup. You also have a quick start if you don't already have a site, but in my case, I have a site that I just want to add Tina to. So I'm using manual setup and you have to install some stuff here before we get started. So first of all, we're going to install Tina, the sidebar that will appear on your site. This will not make the content editable. So we will install this first and then we'll make our content editable. So this is the npm command you use for installing it. And we can go back inside of our console. So npm i Gatsby dash plugin dash Tina CMS. So this is a Gatsby plugin we are installing here. Okay, that is installed nicely. So let's go back inside of our code editor. I have my files here. So inside the Gatsby dash config, we have to configure it a plugin and add it to our plugins here. So we're creating a new plugin here, a new plugin object. So resolve, and then we have Gatsby dash plugin dash Tina CMS. All right. Then we have some options for this one. We are going to have some plugins to this one, but for now we're just setting an empty array because I haven't installed this yet. And then we can configure our sidebar. And if we set it to fluid, it will float above your site. Otherwise, it will push your site to the right when it's sliding from the left. And in this case, I'm actually going to use that option. So I'm setting the sidebar and we have the config object here. We set the position to fixed, like so. Yeah, and this one should have a comma and look like this. So I save this file and run npm start. And this is the same as Gatsby develop. And it builds the site. And we can take a look at our site. I reload it. And as you can see, we have this nice little pen down here. So if I press this, you can see the sidebar. And this is what I meant. I set it to fix now, so it will push my site to the side when it slides in. And as you can see also, we cannot really edit something here now. So we have to add that functionality also to our site. Sweet, sweet, sweet. So let's get back inside of our terminal. I break this. Here in my console. We can also take another look at the site here and see what we have to do. We are going to use markdown files for this one. It's currently supporting markdown and JSON files. So these are the plugins that we also have to install to get this up and running. So we can actually just copy and paste this one, go back inside of the terminal. So what we're doing here, we're installing the Gatsby dash Tina CMS dash Remark and the Gatsby dash Tina CMS dash Git. This one is obviously because we're using Remark, so they have this special plugin for that one. And this one is for Tina to be able to write to your file system. It will update the markdown files that you have in your folder. So I install this once. Back inside of the code editor, we have to configure our plugins here. That's in our Gatsby dash config file. So we have Gatsby dash Tina CMS dash Git and also Gatsby dash Tina CMS dash Remark. Like so, and I can save this one again. So this will make sure that we use these plugins for the Tina CMS and we can get some content inside of our sidebar to edit. 
But we have to do a few more steps to get this up and running. And if we yet again take a look at their site and scroll down here somewhere, they are showing you the three steps that you need to do to get this up and running. But currently they're just showing you how to use this on page queries and with a high order component that you can wrap your page component with or your template component. That's why I'm also going to show you how to use this with a static query and a use static query hook in Gatsby. But first I'm going to show you how to use it on a page component with the higher order component, the hook. So I get back inside of my code editor and I actually modified my index page here in the pages folder. I'm actually not using a page query for this one. I'm having a different static queries in my hero component and my courses component and quotes. But I added this page query just to get this up and running and show you how it works. So I have this page query where I just grab the HTML and the title from my hero section. And it's this up here that I'm going to grab. But I'm already doing that in my hero component itself. So this is the markdown and my hero component. I'm using a custom hook for this one to grab it with a static query. But for the sake of this tutorial, I created this page query and I'm just showing this one here. I'm showing the HTML and that's down here. Yeah, it's this little string down here now. Okay, we have to import the high order component that's called remark form from Gatsby dash Tina CMS dash remark. And what we have to do now is that we have to wrap our component with that high order component. So we export default remark form and we just send in our component or page component, the index page in this case. And we also have to add some stuff to our query here. Otherwise it won't work. So somewhere here we can add file relative path. And this is obviously for the files to get that up and running with the Tina CMS. And also we have something that's called raw front matter. So this will get the front matter in your markdown file. And we also want to get the markdown itself. Raw markdown body. And we can save it. So this is all you need. You import the high order component. You wrap your component with that one where you export it. And then you add these three things here in your query. This one will make sure that you grab everything from your front matter that you need. So the only thing I have to do now is to save this one and rebuild my site, npm start. And it will not work. That's because I have misspelled this one. Go back inside the gatsby-config. Yeah, gatsby. It should be a B there also. So I save this one and restart it. npm start. Yeah, and it's working. Okay, back to the site. Reload it. And as you can see, it's showing up here now, and that's great because now we can edit our content. I can change the text here in the button. As you can see, it changed live. And this is, I think this is really amazing because it makes it so much easier. And you can guess for yourself when you can provide your client with this in the future, it would be super great. And it will be easy for the client to change the content on their site. Learn stuff. And we can change the text here also. Maybe I make this uh, italic. As you can see, it changes here, so that's great. And then you just save it. And if we would have this connected to GitHub, it would save it, it would push it to your GitHub account, to your repo there. So this is all there is to it when you have a page query and you want to have Tina up and running with a page query. But I will go back inside of my code editor now and show you how you can use it with a static query, the use static query hook in Gatsby. So for now in my index, I'm just going to remove these ones here actually. I'm not using them. I don't want it to interfere with my other query. So I just remove this one here. And the GraphQL there, yeah. I can actually remove this one. I don't have any data now. So this is how it's going to look. This is my original 
index component. Just going to make sure that it works also. So I rerun this and PM start. Reload my site. And yeah, it worked. You can see now it has removed these ones from the sidebar. So I can add it in my static query instead. And I have this component, my hero component, where I just have this custom hook that I created to grab the data. And that custom hook is my use hero content. And as you can see here, I'm grabbing data with use static query. So that's the one I'm using. So I, yeah, you could also just have this in your component itself. But in my case, I created hooks instead to get a little bit more structure in my code. So what I can do here now, and this one, they don't actually mention this one. At the site, you have this hook, import use remark form from Gatsby dash Tina CMS dash remark. The high order component that we used before is actually just a wrapper for this one. So I'm using this directly now. I'm going to use it inside of my custom hook here. So just as before, we also have to add this stuff to our actual GraphQL query. So we have file relative path. We have raw front matter. Raw markdown body. And make sure that you have the spelling correct because there's camel casing here. So we imported this hook here and we have added this to our GraphQL query. Now we just have to use this hook inside of here. So as you can see, I'm just returning the markdown here, but we're going to change that now. So I create a const. I'm going to the structure out and call it uh, hero from the use remark form, the hook here. And for this one, I'm just sending in the markdown remark. You can also have options to this one where you can configure your fields, your input fields in the sidebar. I'm not going to show you this in this video. All right, so this is our hook and I'm to structure out the data here. And I have to change some stuff here also because now I'm not returning this one from markdown remark. I'm returning it from hero. So I change these ones here. And that should be all. So we import the custom hook here from Gatsby dash Tina CMS dash remark. Then we add this stuff here to our GraphQL query. And the data that we get back from this query, we just send it in to our use remark form hook. And I just structure out the data I get back from that. And in this case, it's a custom hook that I created. So I'm just returning this one to be used inside of my hero component. And inside here in my component, I just destructure this stuff out. Okay, so let's break this and run it again and see if it works. Back at our site, I reload it. And if we take a look at the sidebar, it doesn't work, of course. <laughs> okay, I'll have to check this one, why it doesn't work. Didn't I save this one? So I save it. Yeah, I didn't save my custom hook. So now you can see it has popped up here and we can change the content here again if we want to do that. And that's great. So that's how you use it with the use static query. Hope you enjoyed this video. I think Tina CMS is going to be big and it's going to be a great tool to use along with Gatsby and also with Next and yeah, maybe in a regular Create Right app. So that's it. See you in another one.